Well, here we go, folks. <laughs> I hope he didn't like it. You know why? When he doesn't like it, the funnier the review. <laughs> well, let's check this out, shall we? <laughs> oh, boy. These days, it seems like there's no depths that Disney won't sink to in their relentless pursuit of profit over artistic merit. And truly, there's no better example of this creative abyss than their endless live-action remakes of their most popular animated movies. <laughs> Basically, the entertainment equivalent of the pod people from Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Superficially, they might resemble the friends and family you once trusted and cared for, and even emulate some of their bad. mannerisms and behaviours, but behind the pleasing facade, there's something very different. The vital spark, the individuality, the very soul that made them who they were has been brutally erased, leaving behind an empty, emotionless husk of what they once were. Which brings me neatly along to The Little Mermaid, a film dogged by controversy and backlash, saddled with sky-high expectations, and of course, reimagined for... Modern, Modern audiences. <laughs> it's a film that everyone seems to have an opinion about, and whose success or failure could mark a sea change in the landscape of modern cinema. But can it really hope to keep its head above water, or will it be dashed on the rocks of failure? <laughs> is basically a case study in why live-action oh, remakes of beloved animated movies are a fucking <laughs> terrible idea. It's slow-paced, bloaty. But it's not even just that. It's that they're not doing it right. All you have to do is stay true. That rhyme day to play the game. Bars to the old film and don't woke it up and I think people will be happy. That's it. That's it. Um, people had a, per had a problem with The Lion King with them not emoting enough, the faces of the animals not emoting enough. Like I told you guys before, that didn't bother me because I, you know, I know that animals don't do that um, in real life. But, I mean, you know, they well, well, don't talk neither. Nah, 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 nah. Yeah, and they don't all pal around and hang around like that either and make friends with each other like that. And with, yeah, it's a whole lot of stuff that they don't do. The point is this. It seemed like people's main problem with that is that if they had made their faces emote like the the, the cartoon movie, they'd have been happy. Like that seemed like the main, like I said, Beyonce's voice acting and the fact that their faces didn't smile and emote and all that stuff like they did in the original um, movie. I think people would have liked it. You know what I mean? I think Aladdin did well, right? Aladdin did well. Um, even though they woke that up too. But that was the kind of like mid stages of, you know, wokeness with that. Because for me, for me, you know, it, it, it's a lot of you have been very angry for a while. And, and if you have noticed, it's taken me a long time to really start getting super irritated with this stuff. And it didn't, you know, I was just like, you know, watching it like, oh, yeah. You know, but I then mean, you know, I'm watching it, trying to tally everything up, considering what else is in the movie. You got what I'm saying? Before I judge it, even though I know there's agenda, you know what I mean? Um, so that's what I was saying. Like it, it's not. I, I don't think that it's just that live action are bad ideas. It's not that. It's just do it right. That's it. And they know how to do it right. They do. With nearly an hour of unnecessary padding, filled with dog shit CGI that looks like it was rendered on a PlayStation 3, populated with veteran actors that look embarrassed just to be in it, or bad actors that look excited to be in anything, a soundtrack that's an uncomfortable mix of tired rehashes of classic songs and gratingly awful new ones, and of course, awkward that rap was horrible. iconic moments to make sure the film adheres to... 
the message. <laughs> In short, The Little Mermaid is just another shitty, soulless, pointless Disney remake whose only real accomplishment will probably be an upsurge in support for the original mm -hmm. animated movie. Anyway, what the hell? Give yeah. me a ship and 50 stout men because we're sailing into dark waters with this one. Now, normally mm -hmm. this is where I give you a detailed plot breakdown, but that would You'll be kind of it. a waste of time in this case yeah. because if you've seen the 1989 animated you know, movie, then you've the basically seen this one too. Yeah. It's pretty much a beat-for-beat -beat remake of it. Halle Bailey plays Ariel, the wayward teenage daughter of King Triton, who's fascinated by the world above the waves and longs to explore it. And when Eric, the young prince of an island kingdom, almost drowns in a shipwreck, she defies her father's warnings and saves his life. Her desire to be part of Eric's world eventually brings her to the sea witch, Ursula, who offers to turn her into a human being in exchange for her voice. Many wacky shenanigans ensue, and Ursula eventually <laughs> betrays Ariel and turns into a giant sea monster that has to be defeated so that Ariel and Eric can live happily ever after. So if it's the same exact story as before, then what's the problem, you might ask? Well, the first <laughs> issue has got to be the length. The 89 version clocked in at just she 83 said. minutes without ever feeling rushed or jarring, which is fucking impressive considering how much it manages to cram in plot-wise. This one, on the other hand, drags on for 135 minutes. That's almost an hour more, and Jesus Christ, you really start to feel that extra length after a while. Just like Tatiana. <laughs> like a sick... <laughs> That's what she said. I knew something was coming, man. I was like, yo. <laughs> I didn't feel the length. <laughs> That's what she said. But I guess he did. That's what she said. <laughs> Hey, it's not as if the script adds anything substantial to justify the extra runtime either. Everything's just slower and clunkier than it was before. Conversations drag on longer than they need to. Transitions and action scenes are flaccid and bloated. And minor characters that are supposed to be there for comic relief get way too much screen time. <laughs> Even the dialogue feels like it was written with absolutely no understanding of what happened in the previous scene. Like, at one point, Ariel retreats into her grotto after an argument with her father, and when Sebastian tracks her down there, she literally asks him, how did you find me? Oh, I don't know, Ariel. Maybe it's because you come here every fucking day of your life. You don't exactly have to be Hercule Poirot to work this one out. All of this stuff adds up to a sense of crushing and frustrating inertia. I was bored out of my arse and scrolling through my phone after the first 30 minutes, and that was with a bottle of fine whiskey to keep me amused too. God only knows how little kids raised on TikTok videos and high fructose corn syrup are supposed to sit in a crowded movie theater and watch this shit. Man, I had to move. There's these people sitting behind me. Kids were putting their feet on my chair. Oh, God. That was... <sighs> I meant to tell you guys about that when I got home to do my review. Yeah, but uh, yeah, if this uh, feels, if this is long, too long to y'all, you're, you're not, yeah, you're going to have an issue getting through it. Second issue is the visuals. There's no easy way of saying this. This movie looks like dog shit. I've coughed up things that are more aesthetically pleasing than this movie. The vibrant and colourful underwater world of the animated film has become a dark, dreary, badly rendered hellscape here. And the occasional flashes of garish colour only serve to emphasise how fucking gloomy and depressing the rest of it is. The CGI is also some of the worst I've seen in any mainstream movie ever. Well, almost. <laughs> the mermaids move with this weird, jerky, unnatural motion. The fluidity and the graceful elegance of the animated film is nothing but a distant memory here. This looks exactly like what it is. A bunch of actors in mocap suits getting pulled around the giant green room. How did this cost $200 million? It's the same deal with the animal characters. Remember Flounder, Sebastian and Scuttle from the 89 movie? Remember how expressive and charming they were because the animators didn't have to worry about rendering photorealistic animals with human behavior? Oh, the gender well, swap scuttle. Because now we've got Sebastian who looks just like an actual crab. Or Flounder who's literally a fish that talks. And as for Scuttle, played by Aquafina. Are you listening to me? Yes. Uh... <laughs> Tell me, who exactly thought it would be a good idea to cast an actress with the voice of a 70 year old chain smoker in a role like this? Listening to her sing is the audio equivalent of having my ears by a made out of broken glass. Oh, yeah, that was horrible. <laughs>
third <laughs> issue is the performances. Let's be honest, Halle Bailey was always going to be a controversial choice for Ariel, and I can't shake the feeling it was mm -hmm. not to send a message or tick a box rather than make a faithful adaptation of the source material, True. but whatever. True. I mean, you can tell that she's a professional singer because she nails all the musical mm -hmm. numbers flawlessly, but as for her acting skills... Well, she seems happy to be there at least. Prince Eric fits deeply into the mold bad. of soft, <laughs> meek, placid, ineffectual, and easily dominated modern Disney leading men, carefully constructed so as not to offend or threaten anyone in a, a modern, modern audience. <laughs> He's written without an ounce of agency, charisma, or self confidence, and portrayed exactly the same way by an actor with all the magnetism and screen presence of Warren <laughs> Davis in the Will TV. He is show. a little dry. Can't have those pesky men getting ideas above their stations, eh? Also, I've got to say that the unspecified... Like, I feel like he had it in him to do more, to be more, uh, I don't know, something uh, more charismatic, but I, I don't know. I, I feel, Like, looking at the actor's ability, I just felt like he was held back. Not that he couldn't do it, but he was held back. So I don't have anything against the actor. He probably was made to tone down island kingdom he belongs to is the kind of place that could only possibly spring from the mind of a modern hollywood writer like the general landscape and climate seem to suggest a vaguely caribbean location mm -hmm. but most of the people who actually live there are white the clothing culture and general technology levels are roughly in line with 18th century europe but the queen of the island and eric's mother is black yeah. and the prime minister is pakistani what the fuck even is this place i love how no matter what historical era or location it's meant to be <laughs> set Every right. Disney movie seems to be more diverse than downtown Los Angeles. It's also nice to know that the film carefully obeys the golden rule of modern writing that no woman can ever possibly get rescued by a man. Like, remember in the finale of the 89 movie how Prince Eric bravely took control of the damaged ship and steered the prow mm -hmm. right into Ursula's chest just as she was about to kill Ariel, saving her life just like she saved his earlier? Well, those outdated ideas of heroic mm -hmm. self-sacrifice have got no place in modern Disney movies nope. where women are all portrayed <laughs> as unstoppable, all-conquering badasses and men just need to step aside and make way for them so naturally ariel takes control of the ship and saves the day instead despite yep. having absolutely no experience or understanding of sailing ships or how they function mm -hmm. Well, that's definitely shite. <laughs> None of that matters, though, because this strong, independent young woman doesn't need some clumsy man to help her. She can jolly well save herself, damn it. You know, I would genuinely love to know what these people think romance is supposed to look like in current year, because movies like this are actively killing the very concept of it. Weirdly, the best aspect of this film for me was Melissa McCarthy as Ursula, who's just as devious, manipulative, and delightfully mm -hmm. malicious as she was in the original. She's evil and she fucking loves it. Mm -hmm. And when Melissa McCarthy is the best thing in your movie, you know you've got fucking problems. All of these issues add up to a depressingly pointless, cynically soulless kind of movie that's really just a longer, less colourful and less entertaining rehash of the very thing it's trying so hard to milk for nostalgia. A film that fails to be either good or original because the things it does that are halfway good aren't original and the rare moments of originality aren't good. And despite all the controversies and debates around race and representation, The Little Mermaid's biggest problem is that, well, it's just a bit shit. <laughs> anyway, that's all I've got for today. Go away now. <laughs> oh boy. Told you, it's always funnier when he doesn't like it. <laughs> I want to enjoy all of the films that I watch. But because I watch him, it's always a small part of me hoping that he doesn't like a movie. Because <laughs> it's always funnier. <laughs> oh, God. Um, yeah, it is what it is. It is what it is. Hopefully they learn. Blood Light's learning. Miller's learning, Target's learning, hopefully Disney's learning. Post comments down below, get over and subscribe to Critical Drinker. And uh, if you enjoyed my reaction and thoughts, hit the like button, subscribe, and share. 10 million subscribers. Woo!